I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we're heading back over to Mike Paletis to check out that nano tank upgrade. So a few items before we get into the upgrade video. First of all, if you're an American Reef customer who ordered the HPD, uh, realize with all of the travel restrictions, etc., I'm only going to be able to mail these orders out once a week. Um, to that point, I've got quite a few orders that came in uh, recently. So again, if you have just ordered it, check your email. I do a good job of communicating, letting you know when it's going to come, but just keep that in mind. Again, the, the orders won't be the typical, you know, get it out within kind of 12, 24 hours thing. Uh, second, uh, with the whole COVID-19 thing, we know that again, so, social distancing, you know, isolation, whatever you want to call it, kind of those practices are in place. Um, but Again, to me, that I use that as an excuse in, in some ways to check out the, the videos that we've got from a reef keeping sign. And there tends to be a ton of them nowadays. Um, Bulk Reef Supply, again, has got a real good one on basically uh, the mistakes that they made two-part dosing. Um, you know, again, your typical kind of two-part, meaning it doesn't have to be a Bulk Reef Supply two-part, but any two-part. And they did a real good job kind of bulletizing some of the issues and why they were issues. And again, Great, great video to check out. Again, that's Bulk Reef Supply. And then, as always, Premium Aquatics, um, they actually announced their giveaway for that Vectra pump. So if you haven't kind of seen that, check that out. Um, and as well, um, they had a couple videos in their tank series um, where Luke's actually going through and they uh, put some clownfish in now. And the latest one is not only with the clownfish, but he also has one of the new Hannah test kits that are out there that kind of combines all of the, uh, the Hannah checkers uh, and then some. And again, very interesting. Didn't realize that that kit existed. So if you've got some time, check them out. Um, with that being said, again, if you're looking for uh, American Reef's HPD, check it out on AmericanReef.com. Just click this little store button and you'll be in good shape. Otherwise, let's check out the Mike Paletta upgrade video where ultimately Mike took his smaller Nano and made it into a bigger Nano. <music> Okay, Michael, what are we talking about now? Now we're going to talk about the nano tank. Uh, uh, you mean the new upgraded nano tank? The new tank? upgraded 40 gallon nano yeah, tank. That's right. I know, 40 gallon is too big for a nano tank, <laughs> but it's a nano in that it primarily houses what I consider nano fish. Mm -hmm. uh, like in this tank, the only fish that would be considered a nano fish is one of the blennies that's in here. Uh, one of the uh, Kumari blennies. Yeah. Uh, there were three, now there's one. That's the problem. He was over there. Yeah, he's in the middle there. there is. That's the problem with a big tank. Sure. You can't put small fish in it. Uh, they invariably get lost, sucked over the overflow, or in many cases, eaten. <laughs> so that's why I have the nano tank. And the nano tank, even though you won't see it at any one time, there's 40 fish in that 40 gallon tank. Cute little fish. Yeah, there's a lot of little tiny fish. There's a lot of small fish that have gotten bigger mm -hmm. uh like there's a pair of shepherds angels in there that are, are to my point of right. view very cool there was a nano uh flag fin angel mm -hmm. which unfortunately developed a very massive appetite for acans mm -hmm. so it took me a day and a half to catch them out yeah. literally i caught them out and took them out and put them upstairs mm -hmm. so bad mistake on my part now all the fish that are in there, none of them from my point of view bother any of the other corals and everything is much more stable. Right. And that tank gets fed once a week. 
uh, a mixture of polyp labs, uh, reef roids, mm -hmm. uh, reef chili, uh, Julian's Ganeo Power. Yeah, and I was going to say uh, frozen mice or frozen uh, copepods and frozen rotifers. It mixed into a paste. I take a big fat mm -hmm. syringe. I lay it on top of everything. I let it sit for an hour. Right. And the, the amount of feeding that occurs in all the LPSs, including the Ghanis and the Ophelias right. and the Lobos and the Acans and the Blastos is amazing. But the growth has just skyrocketed right. since I started doing yeah, that. Yeah, you see the Ghanis. Okay, well, okay, so again, as a refresher, that tank is plumbed in to the main filtration system. Right, and that, right. that's one of the reasons I can feed it so heavily and keep that many fish in it is that it goes the, the water drains out through a sock its own right. sock in and then gets skimmed out and then goes through the carbon and everything else right. so it's really purified water that goes in there and okay so with this one with this back on the feeding that you were talking about um i thought last time you said you were feeding daily so did you change no that no no I, I was never feeding daily it was no, always no? weekly okay so it's always weekly it's always weekly i thought that then and i thought that there was another i feed the tank four to five times a day and there it gets we go. and they get a lot of food from that okay there we go because everything is floating around and everything in there it basically feeds yep yep and that tank gets fed pretty heavily Got it. It, it gets hbd it gets uh, the frozen Calinus PE mix from uh, Piscine Energetics. Yep. It gets uh, Mysis and LRS stuff at night. So it gets fed very there heavily. So they're getting hit from that. They're getting hit from that. They're and not getting target fed yeah, but gotcha. once a week, but they're getting fed four or five times a day. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, I can do that in that tank. I wouldn't recommend it in a little nano tank right. with a typical filter because right, right. you're just going to foul the tank and have algae growing. Right. But there's virtually no algae in that tank. Yeah, One, right. there's no space for it to grow. <laughs> right. uh, two, what's amazing is there are no herbivores in that tank. That's there's no true. snails, there's no urchins, there's no rabbit fish or right. tangs. There's nothing. And but because there's on. so much strong flow blowing the mm -hmm. detritus out and there's so many things eating in there yeah. that the algae really is out competing. Yeah, and it's wild because, like I said, you look at that tank, and that's always been one of my favorite. And it's still, I mean, it just pops. The colors are like, and there's always motion, and, and yeah. the fish are always, again, I love it. Yeah, it, it, it is one of my favorites. I mean, that's why this chair faces that. I can sit here and look at this tank. I can look at the nano tank. Yeah, you get them both. Yeah, right? and, and like that tank is as impressive as this tank. Even though it's an LPS tank, Ooh. it, it yeah, glows. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it does. Yeah. So I said. Well, okay, so on that tank, though, that means every change you made basically to the big tank also kind of affected this little tank. Yeah. Right? The pH went up, which is, is caught as an explosive growth mm -hmm. in everything. I mean, if you look at the skeletons of all the uh, Ghanis, and mm -hmm. you can see how fast they're growing and encrusting down. Because mm -hmm. when we cut the Ghanis, we put them on... Uh, ceramic tiles or mm -hmm. uh, cement tiles yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can see them encrusting down now it's gonna be difficult to cut them because they're grown onto right. the tile they weren't on the tile growing onto it before right, right they were kind of free form right but once they were smaller pieces when well, I want to blow them around so I glued them down and now they're pretty much permanent sure. so it's really interesting to see what we got to do yeah. <laughs> with the saw because we're gonna end up cutting down to the, the ceramic or the, the right. uh, concrete and pulling them off right right Okay, so with this one here, um, as far as kind of like hands in the water, remember how up, like upstairs, your hands don't hardly ever go in the water anymore. Same thing with this one or no? This one's very rarely are my hands okay. in the water. The only tank that gets hands in the water is this tank. Is that one. Because I'm still fighting things and things sure. still blow off and move. Sure. And there's a lot of flow in here, so things get knocked off, unfortunately, fairly frequently. Sure. And going in and bulb basting also has my hands in the water. I mean, my goal is, is by this time next year, hands aren't in the water because it's much more stable right. and this has established itself. Right. right. I mean, that tank is, is basically stable and fixed. There's right. nothing else I really want to add to that tank. Right. Uh, this tank, there's no fish or anything I want to add to the tank. So in that case, from fish standpoint, they're both very stable. Mm -hmm. Coral-wise, there's very little I can add to this <laughs> tank. So in that way it's stable. It's right. now making a few more manipulations with trace elements and things that we talked about. But in the nano tank, having it attached and stable 
Because right. the total volume of everything is 600 gallons. Right. When you figure out the 90-gallon uh, uh, frag tank, uh, the 100-gallon uh, sure. uh, sump, sump yeah, yeah. 40 gallons there, 500 gallons here, I'm at a little over 600 gallons. Right. So it's a, a very stable environment from that standpoint. Right, right. And um, with this little one, Remember when you upgraded it from the last one to the forty? Gallon? I went from twenty nine to forty. It's not. Right. It's a twenty five percent increase in size. Right. But it filled up literally overnight. Right. Because I was going to say that was only a few months ago. Yeah. When you did that, and the little one was packed, and when you first did it, it was kind of like, oh, there's a lot more room on the sides now, so to speak. And then, I took out six colonies of zoanthids this size. Yeah. I cut back on the rock that was in there. I made it so it's a total skeleton structure. It all sits up above. Mm -hmm. There's no real rock on rock. The entire back is empty with a pump so I can turn on a right. power head and it blows all the detritus out. I mean, literally all the detritus out. It's right. perfectly clean once it's done. Right. I do that once a week and everything is just overgrown everything else. I constantly have to harvest zoanthids. I have to cut the goniopora because the polyps grow so long they burn the euphilias, yeah. which I didn't realize Goniopora right. beats euphilia. I, I, yeah, I didn't think. I thought euphilia beat Goniopora. Nope. No, yeah. And there are torches in there next to wall hammers, and torches beat wall hammers. Even though they're both euphilias, right. I, still torches I'm there. learning all these things that I had never had issues with right. because they're growing so fast and they're so aggressive with one another. Sure. It's a, a constant battle in that tank from keeping everything reasonable. Right, right. for it meaning it's banging is it just let it go it's just gonna be let go mm -hmm. and as stuff needs to get cut stuff is gonna get cut okay right. i was gonna say and you could try to put it in the elos <laughs> yeah the elos has been the most problematic tank and i blame that all on starting with dead rock yeah yeah well again it, it has not it has not met this or that or from, the soft coral right, tank any of them right no from the beginning it's yes, always right. been an issue and speaking with a lot of people that have started with dead rock, I probably didn't do it right because I also tried to do the Triton method and do minimal amount of stuff. Right, right, right. I, I should have added more bacteria, more sponges, a lot of different things, which I thought had gotten stabilized, but then the fish got ick. I took everything out. Right. It has been a, an issue. Right. If I ever get it to where it's like this, it will be a spectacular tank because it's all non-acros. It's an right. SPS tank without acros. Here's all the stuff that's going in there. It's all Ceratoporus, Postoloporus, right. Stelophora. Uh, I have a zillion Montiparas that go in there. There's a lot of great non acros right. going in there. Right. It will be spectacular. It's just getting it to stabilize. <laughs> so it has two more weeks till it'll be a month <laughs> without at a 1.010 oh salinity to kill the ick, which uh. that rabbit fish seems to carry forever. <laughs> and then after that, but I have decided, once I bring it back, if the fish get ick, I'm just letting all the fish let die. It, let it I'm going to let it go fallow for six months just with corals. Yeah. And then add fish. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Okay, so hold it. Have you ever thought of this jumping <laughs> to the end result, meaning screw it, empty the water, dump the rock, and start all over again? I have, but the problem is you can't get good live rock now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, caught between yeah. a rock and a hard place. If I start from scratch, I'm starting with crappy rock anyway. Right. So what's the advantage? That rock's been in there going on three years. Yeah. You would think by now, you know, the... the, the yeah, I mean, I've started adding more stuff. To it. Like I said, I'm adding Vibrant. I'm adding uh, BioDigest. I'm adding a lot of different bacteria to it. Right. 
Uh, I've sprayed off the rocks with peroxide. That killed off a lot of the cyano and other things. So it, it's coming along. Mm -hmm. Is it where I want it to be? It's not even close. <laughs> You're right. But yeah. with everything, when it, my patience will be paid off in the end. If I had had all those Montipras in there and put one new in, I would have had money eating nudibranchs. I couldn't have cleaned them as easily. Yeah. So in my mind, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So I've been able to keep every get everything clean now. Uh, they have three more weeks of being dipped. <laughs> then I'm going to put in a couple test Montipras, see how they do for a couple weeks, and then we'll gradually add some of these pieces, some of the right. other stuff. Right. And I mean, I, I'm fortunate that I have lots of corals to play with, <laughs> and. Just being patient mm -hmm. is, is, you know, right. probably good for my soul that I'm patient. So, <laughs> yeah, tell yourself that, right? <laughs> yeah, because that's the tank everyone sees when they walk in the house. And right. Goes, this when you open pathetic. up the front door, it's that tank. Yeah, it's right. that tank, and that tank has never lived up to right. expectations. Right. And then to your point, nothing to do with the tank. It's the content. It's right? the content. Yeah. No, the tank is beautiful. The design is perfect. The filtration's great. It's just right. the rock was bad. Right. And there's right. nothing I can do about that. Right. Like when you walk into this room, before you see the big tank, you see the nano right. tank, and the right. nano tank is dazzling. Right. Yeah. There's again, it's a potpourri of color. Right? Yeah. It, it, and and different corals. Yes. I mean, if someone had told me I would fall in love with LPS corals as much as I do SPS, oh, yeah. but yeah. even zoanthids, the zoanthids pop. Yeah, and yeah. the various Aussie euphilias pop. Yep. And uh, the Goniopores. I mean, usually Goniopores are like this, they're shriveled yeah, and bad. No way. And that so tank, there's movement, and yeah, they're just spectacular in yep. that tank. Yeah, yeah. And with some of the new ones that have come out, I mean, I have right. a couple other ones coming right. that will just be dazzling in that tank. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think they're actually one of my favorite because, again, you just have the motion and the colors. Yeah. Well, you know, it sounds like it's a good point to cut it, meaning, you know, we know for as much, for as beautiful as the Nano is, right? Right. As much as a headache as the Elos is, and how this one's coming along, right? Yeah. Every, every tank is in a different spot. Right, right. So, but most of them are, from my point of view, stable and progressing to where I want them to be. Right, three-fourths. Yeah. I mean, this tank mm -hmm. in another six months will be one of the most spectacular SPS tanks I've had. Right. So from that standpoint, I'm happy because one, I get to, I pay close attention to it. I've finally gotten the tissue necrosis from my point of view under control. Uh, I've managed CO2 better. Everything else is stable. The filtration's better. The flow is better. So even though I thought I had it great from the beginning, I've made it better. Right. Which every tank, as we know, everyone that keeps a tank, a tank is always a work in progress. Yeah. And the progress on this has been relatively slow. Slower than I wanted it to be, but it's still better than I, I had hoped it would be at this point. Plus, I remember you saying, nothing good happens, happens fast. fast. I said that in 1984, <laughs> yeah. or actually 1986, at one of the oh, first really? talks 86. I gave. Okay. And people go, who said that? For I said it in Toronto, yeah. one of the first talks I gave. Okay. Nothing good ever happens fast in a reef tank. Only bad things happen fast. You never come downstairs. And that frag you had turned into a table. But a lot of times you come down to the table you had turned into a frag. So uh, that has happened to me countless times. What the heck happened here? Right. So in this standpoint, I'm taking my time. There's no rush. Uh, you know, Indo's open, but I'm not rushing to add 300 Indo corals. If I add half a dozen, that'll be lucky. Right. And they will be the prime ones that I come across. Right. But like I said, I pretty much have everything I want. Right. Uh, there's not much else Although, out there. Although, you know, it's really cool how when you think you have it all, then sometimes you get places like whatever. I mean, all these guys, Top Shelf to Worldwide to whoever, Jason, right? Where well, I'm, like, going, I'm wow. going to three frag swaps, and Sanjay and I have a couple uh, yeah. road trips planned, so we will come across some other things. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. this stuff is growing and cranking, there's not... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, one, there's not much room. Right, where's it going to go? Right. And two, I don't have much desire to mm. make room. Because yeah. I, I mean, I have to take out nice stuff now. Right. Right. And how much nice stuff am I going to want to take out of this tank over time? <laughs> I can, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, I mean, that's work <laughs> I don't want to do. Uh, you know, I'm cutting stuff. So, mm. I mean, right now there's probably 400 different frags in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the time I'm done, I figure I'll have about 150. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I'll be taking out 250 pieces over the next couple years. <laughs> Realistically. Put it. 
and you're retired, you have nothing better to do. I have <laughs> lots of hobbies, so this is the one that takes up the most time. Actually, it takes up less time now than it did oh, right, right. six months ago, but it still takes up the most time. Sure, sure. So. And again, there's a lot in there, so you yeah. can expect it. So that's where we are. Good. And we'll be back in uh, three or four months, and hopefully everything will be growing to the surface of the water. Okay, hold it. One coral that you want to see grow in there to the surface of the water? Uh, the home wrecker, for sure. Okay. So we'll take we'll take a video of the home wrecker now, right? It, it, it has it is not popped. It does not show right. the home wrecker, uh, right? Vibrance that I've seen another time. Right. Well, you remember Kevin had the same issue. Yeah. Right. Well, a lot of people that you talk to. I mean, yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm hoping right. that once I start bumping up the lights and adding the trace elements, it gets that kind of sure. color that I've seen in in Jason's tanks and other tanks. Sure. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, because you know it can be done. I know it can be done. <laughs> right. It's just I'm just not there yet in this tank. Right. But I have time, and I, I will figure out what it is. And I think that will be something good for everyone if I can say, okay, this is what right. eventually caused it to develop the color. Right. Exactly. Period. Because right. with Ascendant, I'll be able to measure par mm -hmm. and, and lux and see where we are with that. Mm -hmm. With the trace elements, I'm going to know what I'm adding. With a CO2 monitor and pH, I know what the CO2 and oxygen levels are. I mean, I'll have a pretty good case to say, okay, once I did this, this is what kicked sure. it in. Sure, sure. So. And unless it doesn't, and then you're, you'll be looking for that bacteria meter. You yeah. know, the difference. No, there is, it is a test. It tells you what the bacteria are in your tank. Uh, does it tell you the different types it of bacteria? It tells you the different types and the amount. I didn't relative realize amount. That. Yeah, that just really? came out, yes. Oh, okay. There, virtually everything you can want, you can find okay. out about. Okay. It's a ninety-five dollar test, but it's it, one okay. of the tests I'll be doing this year. Okay, cool. That'll be a future article, a future <laughs> talk. Right, right. And on that note, thank you, Michael. Yep.